On this episode of Resi Week, Sonos has opened their API, Google is expanding their home products, and SI has a brand new shading line. All this and more on this episode of Resi Week. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is Resi Week episode 88, Alexa Inside. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by Chief, the global leader in commercial AV mounting solutions. And by Draper. Welcome to Resi Week. This is your weekly wrap-up of all the latest news and stories for the residential AV industry. I'm your host, Matt D. Scott for avnation.tv. And today I'm pleased to be joined by Kevin Mann. He is the president of Taurus Power. How are you, sir? I'm good, Matt. How are you doing? Doing fantastic. Thanks so much for joining me after this lovely Canadian Thanksgiving long weekend. Did you have a good day? Yeah, we had a great day with family and uh, the way it's supposed to be. Friends and family and a lot of fun. I love it. Last but not least, we have Stephen Bronner. He is the president of Pro Audio Georgia and has no idea why we're talking about Thanksgiving in October. How are you, Stephen? I didn't even know Canadians had holidays, man. I, I thought they just woke up every day and apologized and went to work. I'm not sure. I'm doing outstanding. Um, it's a beautiful day. I'm actually in uh, Tennessee today. Or North Carolina. I'm in North Carolina today. And uh, so we're, we're out and about. We're pretty busy. I was in Tennessee yesterday, and I'll be in South Carolina tomorrow and Georgia on Thursday. So, I feel like I need uh, to get you a globe to, uh, to start this off. Um, you know, somebody needs to get me Dora the Explorer or something because I need a map. I need a backpack. <laughs> I, need a, I need a nap. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I'm doing great, brother. It's good to be here. Excellent. Well, let's jump right in, ladies. Well, not ladies, but uh, gentlemen. Coming to us from the good people at CE Pro, Sonos has announced, this came out last week, Sonos has announced that they are going to completely open their API and start a new program called Works with Sonos that will be their approved system. Now, what is exciting about this is, well, they're finally opening their API and they are starting a certified, uh, essentially, partner program. In addition to that, something that in this story kind of goes under the rug a little bit is that they also announced a brand new Sonos One. You may have caught our our quick uh, FaceTime video and and Twitter video about this last week when it was announced. It is essentially a Play One with a six mic array and Alexa built right in. Long and short, they had a bit of a busy week last week. Um, as I said, what, what's so exciting about this is that they're officially opening their API. They're going to let anyone who is a proper developer get access to it. And then, of course, they will certify uh, certain programs and certain manufacturers. So, Stephen, I want to start this right off with you. Because they've had a closed API for ever, essentially, and they have not played well with anybody, Uh, you can say that they played okay with Lutron, uh, for the last little bit that they played okay with Crestron, but it still wasn't much. It was still a very, very limited amount of control there. Since they are now opening the API and not even doing like an approved API vendor list, they're literally opening this wide open. Is this going to allow the channel to better not only integrate with it, because obviously it will will do that, but is this going to allow the channel to better connect, if you will, with, with Sonos and, and what they're doing? Um, I think you, I think the word you use is actually really interesting. Uh, it will allow us to connect with Sonos. Um, I, like you said, it took them forever. Um, it's not a matter of, Hey, look what Sonos did. It's a matter of, wow, look what Sonos finally did. And, um, it's a great product. Don't get me wrong. It's an it's an audio product built by an IT company. Um, it is what it is, and uh, it's got a ton of market share. It's a great product. I'm just not um, I'm not excited about it. I, I know that some people are, and I know that it's it's a great you know solution to some things. But uh, it's it, when I saw it came out, I thought to myself, Oh, that's neat. Sonos has the Alexa built into it. Uh, that's cool, but most of my clients already have Echoes. So, um, 
and there's about to be somebody walking the door right behind me. So that's going to be interesting. <laughs> so uh, I am on the job site, as I said. So the, um, so yeah, the Sonos has, um, with it having the microphones built into it and the Alexa built into it, I think that's kind of neat. As far as the API opening up, everybody's already hacked it, man. Um, you know, for, for better or worse, Everybody's got control of it already. It is kind of limited, and it's cool that they're going to open that up, but uh, I don't know. I think they may have missed the boat on this one personally, uh, but it is exciting for people that are big Sonos people. It's, it's very exciting. I was at a house yesterday, and we integrated a Sonos um, zone player or whatever it is and, um, with, with the audio system, and the customer said, well, what about my Sonos I have in the bedroom and all this? And I was like, oh, you know, all this – it's kind of separate, but all integrate together. And I kind of, I explained it to him. So people are still buying it. It's still a viable product. Um, I just hope that they didn't wait too long. Um, I, the thing that I got out of this, and I want to throw this at you, is the amount of other companies that are teaming up with Amazon. Um, let's yeah. not, let's not miss the big release at Cydia this year, which was the ballet system by uh, Origin Acoustics. Uh, you know, you, I don't know if you caught the gist of that, but they actually teamed up directly with Amazon. They're working directly with Amazon to develop that system. So you've got Origin doing that. Now you've got Sonos doing it. It's, it, I think the sub story to this is Amazon in their own little sneaky way is actually embedding itself in all these major companies and nobody's really paying any attention. You notice the story wasn't, Oh, by the way, we've got Amazon. The story was, here's our big new Sonos. And it's got Amazon, but that's not a big deal. Look at our new Sonos. And I was looking at it like, really? So now that's another major company that has gone to, gone to bed with Amazon. And so they're directly tied together. I think that's a very interesting trend that we're seeing that we're not seeing with Google or Apple. Well, and for, to be fair, the, the HomePod and all that integration is not really out yet. Uh, obviously, you do have Surrey being out, but it's not really built into much at all yet. Kevin, given a, a, a kind of what Stephen was talking about, and, and we talked leading into the show about how this does have Alexa built in and how that could be a very, very big deal. And, and Stephen brought up the partnership uh, that Origin has to to bring Alexa into the house in, a, in an installed environment. For all those people that can't do an installed environment and don't want multiple devices throwing around and, and let's be let's be fair a lot of millennials a lot of younger people they they love sonos they buy this stuff by the maybe not the truck load because it's not that big but they're they're buying it by the trunk load <laughs> so given the fact that they have now added uh, alexa built in they will support uh the google assistant as well but specifically it's built in with alexa support does this just continue to broaden Alexa's hold on on the voice control market and that that integrated market? I think for sure it does, Matt. Um, you know, it, it also from from the Sonos uh, point of view, um, I think it adds features that uh, that people are interested in, in getting and and looking at. Um, you know, so it's it's just widening or, or broadening their market. Uh, awareness and, and potential market share as well. Um, you know, so it, it's really, uh, I think it does a few things. Um, for the, uh, the open API, um, what struck me initially with that was, you know, potentially the streaming services uh, being able to integrate uh, in a better way with Sonos mm -hmm. uh, and, and maybe having, uh, you know, more selection or more opportunity for streaming services. Um, and, and then, of course, with the, uh, the Amazon uh, uh, connection now, I, I mean, that certainly does uh, broaden their hold. Um, Sonos is uh, widely distributed. Um, you know, millions of units that have been sold. Uh, they're, they're certainly a force uh, in the audio business, even if they're not, um, you know, really in the, in the high quality, per se, audio business, but, um, or higher quality. Um, uh, but certainly they, they have been a force for many years. And, and I think this just adds to, uh, to both companies. Um, you know, I, I don't know specifically with, uh, with the API in terms of people having been able to use it anyway over the, over the years, but, um, 
you know, to widen it up, I think that just brings opportunity and new development, uh, potentially some uh, uh, some ideas that, that that will come from different areas that can help uh, you know help move the company forward. So, so I think it's uh, it's an interesting uh, development. Sure. Very good. All right, gentlemen, let's move on and and kind of stay in that that smart home and. Uh, uh, realm of, of vocal assistance coming to us from twice magazine Google last week also this kind of came fairly fairly quickly after the Sonos announcement Google had their their big retail lineup uh, debut and among other things including the pixel 2 that they announced they also announced some brand new uh, home products specifically the home mini and the home max. Now these are going to take on directly the, the echo and the, the larger unit is kind of a cross between a play three and a play five from Sonos specifically. But again, smart devices built in as well as um, the, the home spot, which is your kind of alarm clock bedside table with a camera uh, weird device that I'm not sure what I want <laughs> to do with having that in my bedroom, but notwithstanding, um, they released and, and kind of broadened their line. So Kevin, let's start with you on this one. Now that they have the mini and the max and they brought some new finishes and some new uh, other devices to the table, does this make Google Home and the, the Google Assistant more of a complete package to go up against the, uh, the Alexa market and now I guess the Sonos market? And the Heos market and every other multi-room audio system. Well, yeah, it certainly uh, adds another uh, significant player in the mix. Um, you know, to me, yeah, it does kind of put them right in the mainstream with these products. Um, the the uh, the products themselves look great. Uh, price points are uh, are uh, aggressive. Um, you know, and and certainly the capabilities of the product it, it's uh, it's starting to really come together. Uh, for Google with these products. So yeah, I, I see this as uh, fairly significant in, in, in the marketplace for, uh, for the competition. And, uh, you know, it's really broadens the selection out there for the consumer. Very good. Steven, we just talked about how Alexa has been, you know, partnering with all these other brands and all these other companies to get Alexa built in kind of the way a couple of years ago, we saw Netflix make all those partnerships with every device out there so that it was baked into Apple TVs, uh, Chromecasts, Roku players, every TV manufacturer, everything like that. We haven't yet seen Google do that. They're not really partnering with anybody. It's their devices, their, uh, their ecosystem, their, their system on its own, kind of a little Apple-ish. Now that they have these new products, does that flesh that out enough for them or are they still going to languish behind uh, really the, the market leader in Alexa? And does that matter to the integrator? Uh, I don't think this has anything to do with integration. Um, I don't think the integrators are even going to notice at this point. It's just another voice control system. Uh, I have a, an interesting take on this as usual. Um, I'm shocked. I'm always, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm always trying to see, you know, these big companies, uh, these big companies make these moves and sometimes you look at it and go, as big as you are, you want to play in somebody else's sandbox, something else is going on. So um, my, my idea here is, is that Google put out these products just to test their software. Uh, Google has never been a, uh, a hard product company. It's not. They do advertising, they do software, they do search results. They're not a hard product company. I feel like Google is working on developing their AI technology, which is something they have announced. Uh, so the fact that Google put out this device, I think it's just to basically test their software on a broader market uh, because very few people use their Google stuff on their phones. Nobody uses it on their computer. I've never seen somebody go to their computer and click the microphone button to talk to Google. Um, so, <laughs> Um, so I think that I personally feel like Google is, is using these products to test the market. Um, I don't think that it is something that they expect to sell a whole lot of. Um, it is an attractive product, but it's white. 
Um, quite frankly, I don't want something stark white sitting around in my house. I have four kids. It won't be that way long. So um, I think it's a beautiful design, but um, we'll see. I, I don't know what they're doing. They, it doesn't make sense for a company the size of Google to jump in and play in somebody else's sandbox that already has so much market share and they're not really pushing it. Um, I saw a couple of advertisements for it, but you just don't see as much exposure. Amazon Alexa is everywhere. It's almost like this is a side thought uh, from Google, you know, like, Hey, we've got this software we're working on. The best way to test it is to put it out in the residential market and let people tinker with it. So, so uh, hold on though. To, to what end though? Like I, I understand testing the market. I understand not wanting to go after or, or directly thinking that they can compete with Alexa, but to what end do they mass manufacture a product that might get them some, some data, not, and not a ton of data. I disagree. I think it's going to get them a ton of data. Uh, keep in mind what you just said that you don't want another camera in your bedroom. Um, I just wanted to, yeah, I threw that another in there. for Another, you. thank you. Yes. Appreciate that. Hearts. We, we, know, we know you Canadians. So, <laughs> the, um, so the thing is, is that um, I think it's going to get on more market data than you expect. And to what end? Uh, Google has a very aggressive um, <laughs> pursuit right now of AI. Uh, they're, they're really working on it. That is something that's very, very big to them. Uh, driverless cars. Uh, automated everything, uh, homes that are automated that can that can learn what people do. So now if they put these devices in, um, you know they're on all the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Alexas are on all the time. Everything's on all the time. If they weren't, there wouldn't be court lawsuits trying to get the recordings from Alexa from people's kitchens when there's been crimes committed. These things are recording all the time. So what you say is not necessarily a lot of data, I would, I would disagree. Um, I think that Google is developing these products strictly to grow its AI. Um, I, I, I hardcore believe that because if you think about it, when you were at, when you were at CDA this year, did any manufacturer that you see come up and go, look at our new Google home integration? No, nobody cares. Yeah, I mean, no, no, nobody cares. And, and there's a reason for that because it's a beautiful product and it's flashy, but Google has never, ever, ever been about hard products. They're a vaporware company. They always have been. It's always about data. So um, I don't think it makes a big difference to the integration side. I do think the products are attractive. Like I said, I don't know if I would have put a white cloth product in my house. Uh, <laughs> but on the other side of it, uh, Alexa's all black, and I've had clients tell me they think they're ugly. But the nice thing is, is that if you sit them behind a picture frame, they disappear. So, or hide them uh, in a ceiling or hide them in a ceiling like origin. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Uh, but no, uh, that's my take on it is, is that I don't think it's, it's a big deal to our industry, but I think that it's an amazing story to follow and watch. And, um, you know, we'll see, I think within the next year and a half, there's going to be this big thing that comes out and says, Hey, we did all these products to develop this software. And now look what we can do. So, so Stephen, the, the one thing that came to mind when I looked at this, uh, this product initially was the extension of, of Google as a search engine and, and what a search engine is going to look like three years from now or five years from now, uh, which I think is going to be significantly different than what it looks like today. And, and that was what struck me was this is, uh, I think, the future of, of a search engine is going to be, uh, you know, by voice command. It's it's not going to be something where you're you're necessarily punching things into a keyboard. Um, and to me, it it really made a lot of sense as a as a development strategy for the company, uh, in in light of where they are as a company today. Uh, when you look at it for the search search engine uh, capability, um, you know, certainly leading to. Uh, automation in cars, automation in homes, and, and bringing them into a more advanced position. Uh, but, but that was the first thing I thought of was, hey, this really is search engine related or will be as the company grows. So picture, picture this, and, and this is, I think you're absolutely correct about search engines. So everybody likes movies and almost everybody likes the movie Iron Man. <laughs> 
And in Iron Man, you have a system called Jarvis that runs his house. It also runs other stuff that's really cool. But Jarvis knows everything about the home. He also knows all the software background. So right now we already have computers that we can talk to and we can say, hey, tell me who the first baseman was in the 1961 Dodgers. You know, it can already do that. But imagine a home automation system or a search engine um, that can, that you can say, uh, Google, where's Kevin? You know, where's my son? Where's my daughter? Where's my dog? Mm -hmm. And you've got these microphones all over your house and the microphones listen and it says, Oh, right now, Kevin is in the den. Right now, Kevin is in the sitting room. Right now, Kevin's ready your fridge if he's at my house. So <laughs> there's, the, the, the situation is, is I think that these, these devices, whether it be Alexa, whether it be Google, we are just now seeing the very, very tip of this come out. And I think that just like an iceberg, we're seeing the very tip of what they're working on and below the surface is this huge API that's going to lead us to the first generation of true artificial intelligence, but they have to gather all this data first. How do people use it? I had an, I had an engineer, um, a guy at um, Key Digital. I was talking to Mike Sinberg at Key Digital and Mike told me very clearly, he said, Stephen, we have a house full of engineers but we don't know what to build because we don't know what you guys are using in the field. We come up with all these ideas. We need to know how you're actually going to use the product. And I said, you know, that's really smart. So now what Google and Amazon and these other companies are doing is they're finding out they're putting these devices in the field. And they're going, what are people asking? What are people want to know? What are people trying to do with our devices? And what's just as important as what is working is what questions people are asking. That's not working. And Very that's good. what's, that's, what's important. So that's, that's where I see it going. And I agree with you a hundred percent that it is the <laughs> next step in the evolution of the search engine. Uh, but I think that things like location based, uh, things like that, imagine having a tile thing on your key ring and being able to ask Google, where are my keys? Google can scan the area with a Bluetooth search and they can say, Oh, your keys are in the sitting room five foot from your, your Google voice. And so you go in the sitting room and yeah, they might be hiding in the couch, but they're between couch cushions, couch cushions, five feet away. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's where I think this is going. Um, but you know, we, we, you never know with these big companies, they, they may be doing something totally different. This is just me looking at the technology and going, if I was going to develop this, how would I get the data I need? And the best way to get the data is to, you know, just like people joke all the time that the NSA doesn't need to spy on us. They just need a Facebook account. <laughs> and, and also having that data i mean it certainly uh, speaks to being able to monetize that as well oh yeah yeah it, all it's, it's all about the money yeah. follow the money all right so let's let's jump off that real quick and jump to a story very quickly before we close today that comes to us from residential systems uh steven and i actually did an interview with screen innovations here uh, at CD about their brand new window shades that they just announced at the show specifically. <laughs> what they've done is they've, uh, after you know 14 years making projection screens, they jumped into the automated window coverings market. Uh, this was led by Tom Cooley. He is their CEO. He came to them from uh, Ves Vasa, I believe it is. And long and short, they are making some very fashion forward uh, shades both open uh, like the roll style that you see there and enclosed and the biggest thing about these is that these are a lithium uh, rechargeable battery system so what that means is opposed to previous shade options where yeah either they were wired for power or they use traditional alkaline batteries to to power them that had to be changed and all that fun stuff uh, their new nano nano line wow uh, their nano line has a uh, 2nm rechargeable motor that will allow somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 open and close cycles on a single charge. And the charge is a magnet that you just attach to the side of the frame and it charges your shade up. Kevin, th this is, you know, a really quick advancement. Um, for shades, we have not seen this type of rechargeable technology available. Uh, in a shade. We haven't seen this really hit the market yet. Is this something that, A, you're surprised to see being a power guy? Um, 
but B, does this open the door for just so many more opportunities in this vein? I, I wouldn't say that I was surprised to see this. I, I thought it was cool. I really, uh, I really thought the products uh, were, were super interesting. Um, you know, they're, they're designed specifically for the custom integration marketplace, which I think is great. Uh, and uh, through uh, some capability in terms of the, uh, uh, the, the building software that, that surrounds this, uh, the design strategy is to make them uh, easier to, uh, to specify and easier to, uh, to actually design and size. Uh, and, and then I also like the fact that they've extended this to the, uh, to the outdoor space. Uh, with mm -hmm. uh, out, the outdoor shades, I think they called it the Zen line, and mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, a line of uh, of sail shades, or if you will, or, or sails mm -hmm. that uh, you know for outdoor coverage. Um, so so I think they're hitting on some of the key areas for the integration marketplace, uh, and the technology in terms of uh, rechargeable. Uh, I I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, so so I, I see this as being something that'll be well received. Very good. Stephen, you and I toured the booth together. You did the interview with Ryan. Uh, you both were incredibly excited over these as, as I was. I just wasn't on camera to show it, but I was behind the camera pumped. Um, you got a face for radio, my friend. I totally do. That's why I do audio podcasts. Um, <clears throat> we saw these shades. We're both Lutron dealers. We've both been around motorized shades for quite a few years now. The fact that they've brought a very fashion forward product, but a, a well-priced, we'll call it, a, a well-priced product. Is this going to allow them to quickly take over that high-end shade market? Or is this going to take some time just due to the, the changes that are there? Ah, oh, tough question. So I want to start off by saying that it is a beautiful, phenomenal product. Uh, the side that I love about it, as opposed to some of the Lutron stuff, is it's all beautifully finished metal product. Um, the Lutron stuff is metal as well, but it's the finishes leave a little to be desired. Um, but the new Palladium series from Lutron is, is really nice. Uh, so let's get into their market shares. So uh, just like I was talking earlier about why does Google want to jump into Amazon's you know, sandbox? Uh, you're talking about the two giants fighting each other. Um, if I was going to build a product, I don't think I would go after Lutron. That's just my opinion. <laughs> um, but that being said, but where uh, else do they go? Well, no. And, and I told, uh, you know, I told them this at the show. I was like, you know, guys, this is brilliant. You already make the best screens. And I know people are going to go crazy about that. So, <laughs> that, you know, disclaimer, my opinion, the best screens. Uh, <laughs> you already make the best screens. You have all this screen material. Why not do shades? Uh, you already got the fabric connections. You've already got all the machining. Everything's there. But what they did that was really neat is they revolutionized it. They didn't just, they're not just another product, which I hate a show full of just another product. They actually changed the game doing the lithium thing. Um, I think it's going to be very interesting to see the lifespan of those. I know they say it's like 500 charge and, and recharges or whatever. Uh, I'd be interested to see the lifespan, but honestly, with the average person staying in their home eight to 12 years, I mean, what do you care if it, if it only gets a hundred charges, it's supposed to last two years on a charge. So even if it gets 50 charges, that's a hundred years. So with that being said, um, I think it's awesome how they revolutionize the product. I don't know how they're going to be able to do. I think if they wanted to go after Lutron and especially on the luxury market, I think they would have to price their stuff just a little better. Uh, but uh, Screen Innovations has made an amazing company out of not racing to the bottom. So maybe they know what they're doing. I have a lot of confidence in Ryan, those guys. Uh, I'm a big fan of Screen Innovations. If you saw the interview, you saw that I am a dealer. I'm a direct dealer <laughs> for those guys. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid, baby. Screen Innovations, we're all there. So uh, we'll see where it goes. Um, I, I, I look forward to seeing who they'll integrate with and the advances they make. But uh, – you know, even though Lutron's a monster in our industry, Lutron better watch out because reducing that roll by two thirds and allowing lithium ion recharging and all that. It's crazy. That is amazing 
And just like I said before, isn't it interesting how a house full of engineers couldn't come up with it, but yet somebody with a fresh look on shading was able to do that. Very true. Very true. All right, gentlemen, we will have to cut it there. Otherwise, my editors will yell at me. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us on your, your first episode of Resi Week and putting up with Steven. Not so much me, but mostly Steven. If people want to connect with you, find out more about Taurus Power, which if you don't know them, check them out. It is some fantastic stuff. Uh, Kevin, where can they do that? Well, thanks, Matt. And thanks to uh, Stephen as well. I enjoyed being on with you. Absolutely. He's lying. But, uh, the, <laughs> for people that want to check us out, the best way is uh, through our website, which is uh, tauruspower.com. And that's T-O-R-U-S power.com. Uh, Lots of product information, lots of uh, uh, installation stories, and uh, and it's very easy to find us on the website to get in touch with us. Excellent. Thank you again for joining us. Stephen, uh, always, it's a pleasure having you on my show. I know. Um, I know. Yeah. It's it's my pleasure having you on my show, not the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. That's absolutely true. That's I know it is. If people want to connect with you, uh, find out what, what's moving and shaking in the Atlanta region and Tennessee or South Carolina or wherever you are, um, where can they do that? Uh, you can get me at uh, uh, Stephen at ProAudioGA.com is my email. Uh, you can reach out to my company, ProAudio Georgia. It's www.ProAudioGeorgia.com. Um, you can reach out on Twitter, ProAudio underscore GA. Um, I'm, I'm all over the place. I'm pretty easy to find. <laughs> look for me. Um, you'll always get a fresh outlook uh, when we talk. I work with a lot of other business owners and anyone that has any questions is welcome to reach out to me. And I do want to put a plug in for Taurus. Uh, they make some of the nastiest surge protection on the market. Those guys, <laughs> their stuff. I mean, I think I, I think I saw God himself have to strike it twice. I'm not exactly <laughs> sure what that was all about, but uh, they do make a phenomenal product. So I want to give them some props. And as always, it's been a ton of fun being here. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for the, for the plug, Stephen. We appreciate it. Well. <laughs> for myself, if you'd like to find me, you can find me on Twitter at Matt D. Scott and every other social platform. But more importantly, please take a moment to stop by avnation.tv. You'll find this show as well as a wide variety of other shows with all the verticals that we cover. When you visit the website, please take a second to check out our underwriters. We are extremely thankful for their support and ask that you support them as well. Thanks again. That's all the time we have for this episode of Resi Week. 